and welcome to Revive Life. I'm naturopathic Dr. Joelle, and today's show is about energy and boosting your energy or doubling your energy. Now, are you the type of person that has difficulties getting out of bed in the morning or feeling that slump midday afternoon? There's a whole spectrum of energy and fatigue, ranging from just having the occasional day where you have difficulties rising to having chronic fatigue syndrome, which is fatigue that lasts for more than six months. Research shows that 37% of people are so sleepy that it actually interferes with their daily life. Well, if you're any one of these or you answered yes to any one of these questions, then we, this is a show for you. Today we have guest Liliana Markovich, who's going to be teaching us about reflexology, Matthew Diore and Anna Ravakova, who are going to be teaching us exercises to boost your energy, we're also going to be joined in the kitchen by Erin Phillips talking about protein and quinoa muffins and Dorothy Wilson juicing and protein powders. Lastly, what are the biggest mistakes that people make when trying to help support their energy? Well, Dr. Jacqueline Smith, naturopathic doctor, is going to share her concepts and ideas with us. Now, energy is really about looking at energy in two different forms. It's like a filing cabinet. You have the first drawer, which is your day-to-day -day energy, and that's um, important for your day-to-day -day tasks and all those things. But many people, they actually run on 150%, and so they're constantly depleting that drawer. The second drawer is your reserves of energy. Now, if you are a person that runs at that 150%, each day you're actually depleting your reserves as well. So that it's almost like a needle that breaks the um, camel's back in that eventually something will happen and you may head into a health crisis. Now, I was asking my family, okay, this morning I asked my eight-year-old, well, what do you do when you're actually feeling low on energy? And his number one answer was sleep. And yes, that is the case. Now, for most adults, we get sometimes five or six hours of sleep. Now, that's a deficit of 14 hours a week, which turns into 728 hours a year, and over 10 years eventually adds up to 303 days, or almost a year. In order to understand energy drop, we need to look at a natural rhythm. And when I'm working with patients, I will ask them, what is your energy at eight in the morning? What about 1 p.m.? What about 4? And what about 10? Because what that represents is I'm trying to create a map of your circadian rhythm. And naturally, your cortisol should rise about a half an hour after waking and then drop off, getting you ready for sleep. But when we have imbalances in this cortisol rhythm, what tends to happen is we get interferences where you may be really adrenally tired and it takes you much longer to get up in the morning and then your energy peaks later on in the day to actually never falling off completely to get you into a deep quality sleep or you might wake up multiple times throughout the evening, or lastly, you could actually even wake up early, four or five, and never be able to get back to sleep. So there are many causes of fatigue, and if you have more than three nights uh, where you're not getting a good night's sleep, you probably have a cortisol or a circadian rhythm imbalance, and you should speak to your healthcare team. Common causes, because your energy impacts every single cell and is produced in every cell, it impacts every organ in the body. And common relationships include vitamin and mineral weaknesses, especially looking at iron, folic acid, magnesium is actually one that we don't think about. And the general population, 80% of people can be magnesium deficient. And because it's involved in a lot of cofactors, it's a very important nutrient. If you're hypoglycemic or lacking exercise or weak, have weakness in protein or your body needs to detoxify, again, these can be related to weaknesses in energy. When your body's not cleaning itself out properly, it can't absorb its nutrients and we tend to see common uh, changes in your overall core energy. In addition, energy can be related to subclinical organ weaknesses, including hormones. And then, of course, when people have pain or allergies or sensitivities or are stressed, again, which impacts that circadian rhythm, we can see long-term energy deficits.
So if you're feeling fatigued, you want to talk to your healthcare provider, get the right tests done. You want to look at getting adrenal tests, allergies and sensitivities, digestive tests, and then the most common things, B12, folic acid, iron. So to energize you in 60 seconds, let's talk about some solutions. One, let's talk about putting your iPod on. That's something really simple that you can do in your office. Crank up the music, do your work, and you're gonna see that your energy is boosted. You can also think about something funny. You can watch a funny YouTube video. Clutter is another really good thing. If you get into your office and you've got clutter, it weighs you down. So take a moment, paper clip a few stacks and get rid of that and then you've got a clean workspace to work in and your energy all of a sudden uh, is improved. Lastly, we've got meditation. So again, those breathing exercises that we're going to learn shortly and peppermint, which actually I'm wearing in my lip gloss has been found to boost uh, your olfactory factors, which is your sense of smell, which boosts you up. Now, let's talk about your health savvy and let's find out how your IQ energy test is. The first caller will win a complimentary consultation at Greco Lean and Fit. So true and false, energy is related to food allergies or intolerances. Number two, a dash of cayenne pepper can increase my energy. And number three, eating foods high on the glycemic index can reduce my energy. Four, tests such as uh, B12, iron, thyroid, protein, and hormones can help detect why your energy is low. And five, drinking coconut may help your, coconut water may help your energy. So now that you're familiar with the science of energy, the 10 tips that we have to share with you to double your energy include tip number 10, detoxification, and tip number nine, avoiding the crash. Watching your foods in the glycemic index, which means how quickly foods rise in your body and how quickly they drop. Now, we're joined by a wonderful guest, Liliana Markovich, and she's actually a natural health counselor and is gonna talk to us about reflexology. So Liliana, if I came to your office to, and uh, I had the concern of energy, what would we talk about? Oh, we'll start talking about reflexology and how reflexology can boost your energy in this body. Okay, wonderful. Now, in terms of reflexology, and if we actually look towards the hands, what exactly would you be looking for? First, we will ins I will inspect your hand and look how the hand looks like. Is it more smooth? Is it tense? Or is it warm or cold? Okay. And then uh, I'll do warming up techniques, like warm up a little bit on the skin of the hands and make it more loose. Excellent. And then we'll proceed with reflexology treatment which is done, it could be done on the hands, on the feet, face and ears. Okay. Now, as I understand, there are certain areas of the body that are represented in the hand that tell us about what's going on inside of us. Yes, actually reflexology, it's based on the uh, reflexes that are, each part of the body is presented on the certain areas, on the hands and on the feet, okay. on the face and ears. For example, the fingers of the hand represents the head and I everything what is in the head, like top of the fingers represents the brain, then sinuses, eyes, ears, and basically whatever is in the head. In the head. Okay. Then uh, underneath it's a uh, chest area and shoulder area, and that's area for the lungs, for the heart. And then more in the middle of the hand is uh, actually represent, represented abdomen and all the or internal organs that are in the abdomen. And if we go more to the uh, heel or to the root of the hand, it's pelvic area and organ in the pelvic area. Okay, so if I came to you with fatigue, you would be able to diagnose why potentially I might be experiencing some fatigue? Actually, in reflexology, we don't, do not diagnose. Okay. Uh, reflexology is more as a treatment. Okay. It helps you to boost the energy in the body. Excellent. And uh, we, I use like a health history form to get to know the person more and uh, what's the problem in the body. And if, I, and if the energy is the problem in the body, then I will work on the both hands, like because the both hands represent the whole body. Okay. And uh, we'll specifically then work on the areas that are like a health helping the body to boost immune, the energy in the, in the body. That's and wonderful. that's basically all the fingers which represent the nervous system and then maybe more, more in the adrenal gland.